Jesus, we believe, healed the blind. God's permission. He healed the sick, the lepers. He raised people from the dead by God's permission. And all of that was easy. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos. We also have other things that we do. We've got a second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. You can head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content that's that's there on both channels. You can you can request or suggest a video that you want to see and we'll be more than glad to do it other than that um we do a lot of other things but you can find the links to everything else in the description box below i hope you guys are doing fine i hope everything is well with you guys good evening good afternoon good morning whichever time you see this a big shout out to everyone that's been subscribing you guys are the best let's get to twenty thousand. i have hopes you can get there even before the end of this year um also a big shout out to the people that comment, request, suggest, or interact with us. You guys are the best. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. So today, as you can tell from the title, I'll be reacting to 10 facts about Muslims you did not know. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. When we refer to Jesus in Islam, most Muslims will refer to him with the name of Isa. And Isa is the Arabic version of Jesus. That if you do not believe in Jesus, you cannot be a Muslim. If you say, I do not believe in Jesus, you are not a Muslim. A Muslim has to believe in Jesus as part of the tenets of faith. And Jesus' mother Mary is actually held in the highest regard and esteem when it comes to women. We refer to Mary, the mother of Jesus, as the greatest, one of the greatest women to ever walk the face of the earth. An entire chapter of the Quran is dedicated to her. Chapter 19 is called the chapter of Mary. The Quran confirms his virgin birth. This is without a doubt in the Islamic religion. You cannot doubt the virgin birth of Jesus Christ because it is affirmed in our book. And Mary is considered to be one of the purest women in all of creation. Behold, the angel said, God has chosen you. And this is angel Gabriel talking to Mary. A discourse that took place between angel Gabriel whom all of us refer to and we know Gabriel. In Arabic he's called Jibril, the archangel, or the angel that brings the messages to the messengers. He said, Behold, God has chosen you and purified you, and chosen you above all the women of the nations. Mary, God gives you the good news of a word from Him, whose name will be Messiah. And we do affirm Jesus as the Messiah. Al-Masih, the one who is anointed, or the appointed one. God gives you the news of a word from Him, whose name shall be Messiah, Jesus, Son of Mary. Honored in this world and the next world, and one of those who will be brought near to God. He shall speak to people from His cradle, and in maturity He shall be of one of the righteous. She said, My Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has ever touched me? How shall I have a son when no man has ever touched me? He said, Even so, God creates whatever He wills. He only needs to say, be, and it is. And in Islam, we affirm that God is the one who does not have need. God is the one that is free of need. Even God says, He is the one that is free of need, but you are the one who is in need. And we know we as human beings, we, we live in a fragile existence. We live in a fragile existence. We're always hanging on the brink of death. We never know when it's going to catch us. So we're always in need of things. We're always upon that fragility. If we don't drink, we die. If we don't eat, we die. If we don't breathe, we die. If our body functions begin to get out of warp, we die. If our heart stops, we die. If our liver fails, we die. So many things can go wrong with this fragility of the human uh, 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 composition that it just shows that we're really truly in need. But God is the one who we affirm is, does not have need. He doesn't need to eat. He doesn't need to drink. He doesn't need to sleep. He needs nothing. He himself is self-existing, and he himself is self-sufficient, free of all need. Islam draws the line at divinity. We believe that divinity is for God alone. We believe that divinity is for God alone, and he does not share that divinity with anyone. He does not share that divinity with anything. He alone holds that power of divineness. 
the word Allah is only an Arabic word that means the God. It means literally the God. When we say Allah, we are referring to the one true creator of the heavens and earth. Because there is a word for God in Arabic. There is a word for God in Arabic. It's ilah. Ilah means anything that you worship. Anything that is worshipped. And so we don't like to use the word God so much because it has different connotations to different people. God could be many things to many people because it's just something which you worship. But when we say Allah, when we say the God, we're referring to the one true creator of the heavens and the earth to whom we direct our worship. This is why we use the word Allah. When it comes to the crucifixion, this is a, one of those major chasm breaking points between Christianity and Islam. When it comes to crucifixion, this is what Islam holds as truth. We hold as truth that Jesus Christ, peace be upon Him, was not crucified. We believe that the crucifixion took place, as the Quran says so, that crucifixion took place, well, but we believe that it was not Christ who went on that cross. We believe that Christ was not the one who went on the cross, but God saved him from that. From that curse and from that affliction and from that miserable and horrible death. God saved his chosen prophet and messenger. Not only to save him from that curse and that humiliation, but because of the fact that Jesus' mess- mission was not over. It wasn't done yet. He has more things yet to do. And we believe when he comes back, he will fulfill those roles, which I'll discuss in a moment. We believe that crucifixion took place, but it was not Jesus. And Jesus was raised up into the heavens. We do not know, and this is something that I want to be clear about. We do not know who went to the cross. We can't say that for sure. Because in Islam, we're only allowed to say that which we're sure about. In Islam, we're not allowed to tell a lie. In Islam, we're not allowed to share information which we're not sure of. And that is one of the things that we're not sure of. There are some alludings to what may have happened at the time of the crucifixion. But again, they're theories. We believe in the miracles of Jesus. We believe in such as in chapter 3. I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. I make for you, and this is one miracle that is recorded in the Quran. I make for you out of clay as it were the figure of a bird and breathe into it and it comes a bird by God's leave. And I heal the blind, the lepers, and I raise the dead by God's permission. So we believe that Jesus performed miracles. We believe one of the miracles was that He created a bird out of clay, fashioned it, breathed into it, and it became alive. Not by any miraculous divinity of Jesus, but through God's permission. Because it's God that gives life. Jesus, we believe, healed the blind. God's permission. He healed the sick, the lepers. He raised people from the dead by God's permission. And all of that was easy for His Creator. We believe that every prophet of God was sent for one reason. One reason alone. And that was to make the Creator known. And that was to make the Creator known amongst mankind. And we believe every prophet and messenger called people to worship that one true Creator alone. With no partner. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. You should love your neighbor like you love yourself. We believe that every prophet and messenger had this simple message. Worship God, obey Him. Treat people as you would like to be treated, and you will have success in this life, and you will have success in the hereafter. This is the humble message of the prophets. And it has not changed since it began. And we as Muslims still follow that same Simple teaching. Worship God. Acknowledge Him. Obey God. Treat people as you would like to be treated and you will have success in this life and in the next. Very simple message. And we believe all the messengers carry this message. We believe that Jesus will return. And we believe that Jesus will return at the time of the Antichrist. Which is another similarity between Christianity and Islam. We believe in the Antichrist. We believe in the one figure, the one person. We do believe as a person. The truth about that is that it will be an individual, an antichrist, which in Islam and Arabic is called the Dajjal, the false Christ. He will come and he will create so much mischief and bloodshed on earth. And he will be pulling people over into his false worship. We believe that he will call himself the Mahdi, which I'm not going to go to yet. Then he will call himself Jesus. And then he will say that he is God himself. And he will be calling people to worship him. And those who do so will be barred from from any benefit in the next life. They will die as disbelievers. But we believe that there will be a war that will take place between the Antichrist and the true believers in God. 
We believe in Armageddon. We believe in Armageddon. We believe that it will happen. We believe that the true believers in God and the Antichrist and his followers, they will clash. They will clash. And that when the final battle is to take place, we believe that the Muslims will be marching. Muslims submitting to the will of God, worshiping God alone. That they will be marching towards where the Antichrist is, which he will be in Israel at this time. And I'm telling you this from authentic references in Islam. That the Antichrist will be in Israel at the time. In a place called Babul Lud, which where Tel Aviv airport is right now. And that on the way there, they will be passing through the Arabian Peninsula, going through Syria. And in Damascus, the Jesus son of Mary will descend. That when they reach Damascus, at the time of the, I think the morning prayers, Jesus will descend in Damascus. And the leader of the Muslim army will step back and say, look, you are our leader. Step forward and lead us. And we believe that Jesus will say, no, you are their leader. You lead. And he will show his subservience to the one true religion of God, just like it's always been. And that we believe Jesus himself will go forward and will kill the Antichrist. Not physically. We believe that just when the Antichrist witnesses Jesus, that's it. He'll melt. Just like salt. And we believe that Jesus will go on to live and fulfill the rest of his life. He will get married and have children, etc. We believe that he will die. And we even believe where he will be buried. There is a spot ready for him right now in Medina. Right next to where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is buried, there is an empty space. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, leave that there. Because he said, the son of Mary will be buried here. So this is what we believe as Muslims about the crucifixion. We believe that Jesus will come and fulfill that task, but that will be at the very, very end of days. That will be at the very end of time. Very important facts and um, this should be a reminder both to you and I of what's to come at the end of the day or what information we're supposed to learn because some of us easily forget even these simplest things. What bothers me is not bothers but what I mean by bothers is the fact that I'm conflicted by the way Christ was um, crucified. I'm still not at times with the way things went. Why would you sacrifice your own child or why would you sacrifice someone that's doing good on earth? Why couldn't he die just a normal death? Otherwise, I'm familiar with the rest of the things that were said here. Not much was new and I'm glad I reacted to this. Let me know what you guys think about this or have an answer to my question. And let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you.